Hello accountability buddies, this is week 12 of uh, 100 days of making cyberpunks, it's where I spend uh, 100 days uh, basically seeing how fast I can make the comic cyberpunks, um, which is about uh, an event that makes a, like, a large portion of the disabled people um, cybernetically enhanced. So. Uh, the name's a little on the nose, I guess. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to... I made a mistake. I, uh... What... What we should... Do, what I should do when I'm creating one of these is to make the broadest, least detailed part on the bottom. And, uh... So that would be the shirt. But I accidentally put this hand over it. So, uh... That'll bite me in the ass a little later, but uh, we might not see that in the stream. Um, so I was going to talk about another topic, but we'll see how it goes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, this is Illustrator. Um, um, for some stuff, I use a, a free program called uh, Inkscape. Illustrator's better, but. Um, Part of the reason I use Inkscape for other things is because um, I want to sort of phase out Illustrator because my version's getting old. One day Windows might update to where my version doesn't work anymore. So <laughs> my, my version's from my family printing shop, so um, I could never really afford the program. I just. Uh, inherited it when grandpa closed the business. So one of the things I was talking about in the original stream is how um, uh, if I can't get look, something to look right when I'm doing the actual drawing I'll uh, I'll just kind of save it for the illustrator phase because it's um, it's easy, it's it's sometimes easier to fix it here than to try to get it right in the drawing you know like um this panel is five inches tall on the on the physical drawing and so getting down and drawing a hand might be kind of um, you know hard to do so um, and sorry about if uh, Facebook um, beeps sometimes but um, if someone's trying to get a hold of me, Facebook's the way they go, so... Uh, yeah, like my, my phone is... I usually don't know where my phone is and it's not charged, so nobody ever calls me. If someone needs to get a hold of me, they get a hold of me on Facebook. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, I was feeling paranoid when I started recording. I usually turn it off, but for some reason I was feeling paranoid today. Oh, that still looks terrible. I will fix that later. Okay, um, yeah, so, anyways, uh, I'm gonna go in here, this is where I left details really light, I'm gonna zoom in some more. Um, now, one thing, I'm basically drawing with color, um, and, uh, on the paper, oh wow, that's messing with my eyes, alright, sorry about that, let me, uh, do this real quick. Um, oh, I forgot there was a reason I was sitting so close to my computer. Uh, hopefully it sounds better. Alright. I hope you appreciate the sacrifice I'm making for you. Um, yeah, so I only have three values and uh, white, at, like the, I haven't found a white that lets me like do the details well and then lets me work on top of it and um, I just haven't found a white that I'm really happy with uh, I've tried a bunch of different mediums and uh, just not thrilled I'll probably have to adjust these later when I uh, when I flip them um, but I'm just throwing that in there for now yeah so um I have this theory that uh, 
with more and more apps coming out to imitate art styles that uh, you know can turn photographs to look a certain way um, all the little mistakes I make are are gonna become more uh, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh, excuse me again um, all the mistakes I make are gonna become more um, personalized and um, I don't want to use the word acceptable, uh, but they're going to become more interesting, I guess, because anybody will be able to imitate different art styles. So I, I, uh, I, I never really sought perfection, but I'm really not now. Like I'm consciously kind of avoiding it to a degree because, um, you know, soon there'll be an app for that. So it's a, so my futurist. Uh, ideas going again. Um, yeah, so um, one thing I said I was going to do last week was create a, a Facebook group for proofreading. And uh, I got some good feedback from Isaac Crawford, who I talked about last time. Um, I, uh, I really like his, uh, he did a book about, um, called the the Gray Judge, I think, and it's it's about uh, gray wolves. It's it's pretty good. It's um it's like a like I could see his stuff very easily being like a dark horse or drawn in quarterly or something. So uh, man, that looks screwed up too. Um, you'll notice I'm not really sticking to the drawing. Um, and uh, on this case, what happened was um, when I did the thumbnails, I was thinking he's going to be sitting in a wheelchair. Um, it, it's sort of a gag because, like, the this is when one of the characters named Chester first wakes up with her bionics. Oh shit! Um, so. Uh, uh, yeah, that happens if you don't close your objects. Then the night. See, I thought I had closed it, but I missed. I've noticed I've been missing more and more lately. Um, but yeah, if you miss, then uh, you're not creating a new object. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, it's created some kind of issues here because there's. Uh, an area here that I can see through that I wasn't counting on seeing through because when I did the final art I put him in a sofa because I wasn't I wasn't thinking about what I was intending to do um, I guess that means I should do tighter uh, thumbnails but um, I was uh, I was talking to a friend about uh, well I was doing uh, it was for my political consulting and uh, I, I told her it was uh, it's better to do things right than it is to do it right now and uh, I don't always have that philosophy in my art because um, uh, with the issues I'm having with my wrist um, you know I don't have the luxury of spending too much time on something and I really don't have the One thing I just have to kind of accept about myself is that there's there's going to be kind of a rushed aspect of my art because I uh, um, I think a lot of artists they'll see a piece and they can just like work on it forever and I've I've never been able to do that I get to a stage where I feel like it's done I've communicated everything I want to communicate when people look at it they understand what I'm trying to tell them. And then I just want to go on. I'm like, uh, um, I'm very like pragmatic in my storytelling that way. Um, you know, like I, I feel like I'm here to communicate an idea. I don't necessarily care about how, how pretty it looks. Um, so, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't worry about that to a degree. I, I do in like choices of frame, 
but not in rendering and stuff so um so I'm gonna leave that now because like um uh, I see what it looks like is happening is that his uh, uh, his head and torso are too big which in Illustrator I can fix really easily so that won't be a problem I might have to resize some stuff but uh, but stuff that I thought in the drawing stage that was going to be hidden by the sofa and I did draw the sofa kind of half ass too because I, I knew I was going to fix it in Illustrator <laughs> uh, I gave myself too by taking shortcuts, I gave myself too much work, which which happens sometimes. But um, I'm generally good about. Um, uh, I'm gonna start on her head first. And this character is bald because, um, uh, well, as she would put it, she never has to look at herself, so she doesn't care how she looks. Um, she's a. Uh, She's she's quickly becoming my favorite character because um, uh, I think that might actually look better, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, she uh, she's quickly becoming my favorite character, but uh, I think one day um, people will realize that I have a certain type of character I like to write because um, she's very similar to. Uh, um, a character in another book I'm working on um, called Late. Um, what's funny about Late is uh, this brown paper that I use. Um, the when um, oh one of my kids is up. <laughs> um, the brown paper I use. Uh, I went to go buy some more from the printer, and. Uh, the chipboard he gave me the second time was considerably darker than the first one the first time and so uh, um, unlike this late is gonna be painted uh, it's well it's just for the sake of argument we'll say it's painted on on this chipboard um, and uh, so it could really throw it off to have the paper be a different color because a lot of the paper shows through in the painting and um, but the good thing is I finished everything that happens during the day and the rest of the book um, I think takes place at night so uh, if I can't get more of the lighter paper uh, it shouldn't be that big of a deal because everything's going to be darker anyway so um, so I kind of lucked out on that. All right, and yeah, so I haven't been showing a lot of process stuff lately. Well, for one, as I took me a while to find a screen capture software, but um, also uh, everything seemed to have spoilers in it, and uh, um, this page doesn't really have any spoilers, um, I don't think. So. Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, if I was working on the dialogue, it would probably give some stuff away, but uh, you just see these two characters talking. Um, but yeah, you can see here where um, you know she recently got her... Oh, I need to put her little antenna in. All the pages before this... This chapter is a flashback, so all the pages before this, she didn't have her little antenna. Oh shit, this is, man, this is like a weird angle. Alright. Uh, I think it'll be like this. We'll see if I get to the point where I edit it to show. Um, sometimes I just do things as little notes to myself. So, uh, even if these don't look great right now, um, when I come back in later, um, I might have my head around the perspective better, Ugh. and, uh, it can make them look better. And then, also, things look different when you color them, so, uh, um, 
you know, I don't need things to be perfect. I just, uh, yeah. So I basically every step I do is about getting me to the next step. So, um, if I, uh, if I feel like it's helping me communicate things more clearly, um, I'll continue with it and otherwise, uh, I'll abandon it. So, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know if I digress too much, but so here, um, kind of the gag is that she lives in this little apartment in some kind of like, you know, assisted living, uh, because she was, uh, disabled and, uh, she doesn't really have any furniture and she's just kind of utilitarian anyway. So if no one, uh, if no one was visiting her, she wouldn't want any of that shit around. So she, uh, so he's sitting in the wheelchair cause it's the only place to, to, to sit. Um, and, uh, and she's just sort of getting up and right. yeah, nothing too visually exciting going on here. See here, I was very literal with it. Um, actually, all right. So we're, we're done with the pencil stage because like everything, um, even though I'm going to adjust a lot of stuff and fix stuff, um, uh, I don't need the brown paper anymore. The brown paper is not going to help me. Um, because, uh, um, I have this wireframe now. So, um, I dropped this in, this is my default background color for the book. Um, so I'm going like this and oh man, that's, I don't know if that is sitting weird. My light sensitivity, or uh, maybe I'm just getting old and my vision's getting weird, but, uh, yeah, I have, uh, a lot of stuff's been messing with my eyes, which is, um, why I didn't get as much, one of the reasons I didn't get a lot done, get as much done this week as I wanted. Um, so one thing that's nice about working this way is I can kind of work on multiple frames at a time. Uh, it's going to be the same color. Let me see color. Oh, shit. What did I do? Alright. I'm using uh, an illustrator. Uh, if you're using the mouse wheel, you can uh, hold down Alt and, uh, and control your zoom with your mouse wheel. So normally the mouse wheel goes up and down. And then if you hit control, you can go left or right. So uh, that's pretty cool shortcut oh and then then right now I'm holding down shift because I'm uh, selecting everything that is white person colored J um, one of the critiques I got oh wait I forgot that this is not this is gonna be the darker tone um, one of the critiques I got on this was that uh, I was pretty literal on the color um, and uh, the reason for that is because um, a lot of things going on in the book I want to show how it disproportionately affects people of color so um, I didn't want it to be ambiguous who uh, who was what race so um, and, uh, um, you know, I, I could have conveyed that with my drawing, I guess, but, uh, some characters like Chester here, she can, um, she can sometimes read as black, uh, and, um, cause you don't, you know, you generally don't see a lot of white women who are, are bald. So, um, and, uh, there's some stereotypically black features that I have. <laughs> so, uh, um, so a lot of my characters kind of have that going on too. So, um, 
yeah, I just, uh, and sometimes, sometimes it's good to spell things out, not, not always, but sometimes, so, that was, like, my thinking on it, and, uh, um, I don't know if I'll always stick to that, I might get more experimental with the color as the book goes on, but, um, um, I'm not really at a stage right now where I, I want to play with that. Um, I want to kind of just keep moving forward, especially since I'm keeping track of my progress for this 100 days. Um, Alright, so this is kind of, um, so the the way I got the palette on this is uh, there's a 100 palette challenge and uh, I've just been using palettes from the 100 palette challenge to do various projects because um, I just want to think about color differently um, and I, I can never um, I have so many projects going uh, I don't I don't spend enough time just like goofing around everything's part of a project so um, usually so are my um, experiments where most people would experiment in their sketchbook I'm experimenting while creating something that you know is uh, going to the public or you know however you want to put it so that's uh, how did it get on that tool? That's weird. Oh, one thing in Illustrator 2, you'll notice that there's two different pointers. Um, the difference is this one selects the whole object. This one selects, can select part of the object. Uh, I used to hate Illustrator when I was in art school. Because um, uh, if you collect, if you don't click exactly on the line, it will... Uh, yeah, see, it selected the whole object, even though there's supposed to be a separate tool for that. Hold on, I did do that right. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. I don't even know how I did it now. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I used to select... The older version of Illustrator was really... The line detection was so sensitive that... Uh, you know, it didn't work the way I thought it should. And so I used to really hate it, and then I found out... Um, at some point they added Smart Guides, and much later than it than they added it, I discovered it. And so once, once I knew about Smart Guides, I really liked it, because you have to click exactly on the line, or exactly on the anchor pointer, you know, depending on what you're doing. I have a feeling I, I missed something. There should be, like... Oh, I see. Okay. Um, control, shift, bracket uh, will bring something to the front or back, depending on which bracket you hit. So. Uh, Alright. And. Control I is the color selector. I don't always use the shortcuts because. Um, uh, if you, uh, you might hear, like, a dragging sound, it's because I'm, I'm ambidextrous with the mouse, so when I get tired with one hand, I'll switch hands, and so I don't use shortcuts a lot, because I, uh, I'm usually resting the hand I'm not using, um, because I'm just on my computer all the time, and, uh, I really should spend less time on social media, because that's, that's computer time that could be going to art. Um, it's funny because I I was never really interested in social media. I just sort of did it to network for my art. And uh, now I spend more time networking than I do on arting. So, uh, for... Okay. Um, yeah, so that's kind of an issue and I'm trying to think how to resolve that. So because this is my background color, 
Um, usually on the shadows of the clothes, I skip straight to the darker of the three grays. Um, just so nothing gets lost into the background. I'll drag this up since I'm doing more than one panel. Let's see, and you'll see some of the objects get kind of lost because of uh, layering issues. Um, I, uh, I messed up here. Um, I don't remember if I did that in this recording or if that was a previous recording. Here's another one I did. Bracket, bracket, bracket. All right, I think that shows everything that's hiding under there. And this little detail here. Uh, and I should... All right, I'm gonna draw in a little highlight for the ear here because um, this doesn't read real great. You don't really have to draw things in super detail. You can just kind of imply that they're there and it can make a big improvement. Um, one thing I kind of struggle with is uh, you know lighting versus design. Like what, what makes sense versus what will read clearer. Um, and so uh, You know, that's one thing an illustrator can do is make choices like that. Just kind of bump this down slightly. Yeah. Alright, and... Yeah, okay, it's on that tool. Doesn't need to be on that one. V is the shortcut for the other arrow. Alright, and I'm not leaving any of this purple. I think I think I might use the purple to do like um I might use it as another background color. I did it on a a previous page and I like the way it looks so I'll probably keep doing that and then it'll help me in my shift towards abstractness. Shit, I accidentally missed. See how it says path, that's the smart guides where it tells me what I'm actually selecting. Um, and I can see I missed stuff but uh, anyways because that's one thing that's nice about not using any line is when you see line it's um it's very obvious that you missed something. I wonder how if anybody's watching who this this hand has been driving crazy. Take care of that. Okay, um so I don't really remember what I talked about now. Um but it's my second to last week, so uh next week, um I will be talking about what this hundred days meant to me and uh, what I learned and and uh, how it's going to affect my plan of trying to do this book monthly because um, I've fallen really, really far behind. Uh, I just had a lot of personal stuff kind of get in the way and, uh, um, you know, time management issues in general. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to have to fix a lot of stuff um, on here because this is a. Uh, his proportions are all wrong. So I'm going to have to scale his head down a little bit. And then, uh, though that might give me some room for some background. What, I, what I've been doing now, lately though, is um, I've been. Um, when I do the. Um, oh crap, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that. I was going to... I've been doing something different, and I don't remember what it was. 
Hmm. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, I've been doing the lettering before I do the backgrounds uh, as an attempt to save time so I don't work on something for two hours and then cover it with a word balloon. Because, um, as I've said in previous videos, I don't write scripts. I, uh, I just jot notes on the thumbnails and then, uh, and I usually, I change things around because I'll, I'll think of something funny, like, especially with this character Chester, she's really, uh, a kind of obnoxious, so, uh, um, I like her to say obnoxious things, it, if I'm really tickled by it, uh, I'll blame being from Chicago, I have kind of like a, a crude, like a, you know, I love someone who's like kind of crude and honest, you know, like they're not really worried about how people feel about something, you know, they're, they're more worried about being telling the truth. So, um, that's a kind of character I like, uh, um, oh, I guess that's one difference between Chester and the character from late, um, is that, uh, the character in late, she's, she's not really honest with herself necessarily. She's got a bunch of things she's doesn't want to think about where Chester's like more knows the deal. Um, and, uh, I'll just tell this story while I'm on it. I was going to wrap this up, but now I got kind of got interested in what I'm doing. Um, so, uh, Chester is named after, uh, when my family, Chester's named after my, uh, an employee of my family business, not when, uh, um, I think he was hired, for a while our shop was Union, and, uh, um, he, I think he was hired back then, and, uh, oh wait, that's not gonna work, hmm. Um... So, uh, anyways, Chester, so, he, he was this old guy that, or, well, I don't know how, he probably wasn't that old when he was working there, but I, I only met him once when I was very little, and he was an old, old man who'd been retired, but, uh, anyways, this guy, he worked for my family business, and, uh, my dad and uncles grew up around him, and so, uh, um, we had a bunch of Chesterisms, as we call it, just like little things he would say. And, uh, you know, he'd just come up with some funny stuff. He's kind of a stinker. Like, kind of a, kind of a Bugs Bunny type. So, um, I needed a character like that in the book, because the, um, you know, why wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I like to have more interesting characters and stuff, and, um, some of the, um, I like to think of, uh, Cyberpunks as my AMC series. So there's lots of flashbacks and character moments, like from before everything changed. And, uh, um, I had certain character, the character that I set up to be like, th that is in the first chapter and everybody's going to think is the, the main character of the book. Um, you know, uh, I, I wanted to have characters that were more grounded so uh, the audience could kind of identify with them and uh, um, so uh, by and by grounded I mean kind of like more relatable and so um, uh, so that character doesn't have as much personality um, so so he can be more relatable and then I did the same thing with the second chapter with a different character uh, she's She's relatable in a different way, um, kind of, uh, the, the first chapter is sort of just to establish what the world's about, and the second chapter is to kind of establish, like, kind of the cosmic horror of the situation, um, you know, so there's like a political horror and, uh, um, you know, world building going on in the first one, and the second one's kind of a you know, uh, the cosmic horror, like, kind of the existential problems or whatever. Um, so, uh, that's all. So I was setting that up, and then, um, 
Um, and then now, so now that all that is sort of out of the way, like that the audience kind of knows the stakes, um, I, uh, I started having kind of more fun with it and telling the kind of story that, you know, from my point of view, the kind of things that w makes my stuff different. So that's kind of the goal. Um, yeah, so uh, I'll wrap this up up here in a minute. I know I keep saying that. Uh, I am tempted to comment about how minimalist I went with the background here. Uh, it's just a lot of it's because I'm since I'm working with a limited palette and I'm not shading and stuff. Um, I uh, you know to keep things clear, um, it's just easier to go minimalist, and I don't think it takes from the story. So. Um, and yeah, so I had some kind of, even though it starts to look like line here, uh, you know, I feel like it works for me. Um, and before I go, I will, because uh, a lot of this is supposed to be about accountability, um, I wanted to show how little I got done this week. Um, I didn't, the page that I was showing you, uh, I was supposed to finish, today's Monday, I was supposed to finish it by Sunday, um, so I... I've gotten pretty close, but I didn't quite finish it, so it, you know, it counts as a loss. So I, I didn't end up finishing any pages. Um, I think I did two pages of draw, drawing. I didn't double check to make sure I'm actually on page 43, but uh, I think I've done two pages since we, because uh, I think I was pretty much done with one page. Finished that one last Monday, and then I finished another one uh, like yesterday. So, um, yeah, I've been working on setting up the proofing, and uh, uh, I did a bunch of political stuff this week, and uh, yeah, so I did other things, but they don't show up on the table, and, um, you know, I made, I, I was, I've been keeping track uh, because I know, you know, what my excuses or reasons are for things. So, I'm, I'm just now noticing that I'm, uh, anyways, so, uh, it doesn't look like I'll meet goal, um, you can come back next week and, and see, cause, uh, um, I could, I could do six pages in a week, that's, just drawing six pages, I should be able to do, uh, vectoring, uh, 13 pages, very unlikely, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's not likely, um, lettering, um, that's only six pages, uh, so maybe I'll be able to do everything but this stage, so, um, uh, yeah, so, maybe, uh, see, I was sitting here kind of depressed, because I was like, ah, man, I'm nowhere near finishing, but this is somewhat plausible, other than the vector art, and then the uh, covers I knock out fast, so, um, the grand finale is next week, and uh, I will see you here, and uh, um, I will talk more about what the goals of the book are. Right, until then, uh, have a good week.